It's a good afternoon, Coward Football, and I just want to reach out and finally give you guys an update on what we're doing this uh, remaining part of spring leading into summer. First and foremost, though, we got to thank everybody for the wonderful job they did during the mall sale. I know it was a couple months ago, but it went off with a bang. I tell you, the uh, amount of help and volunteers we had from our family and our friends at the program was just unbelievable. The kids hustled and worked hard. We've had so many people thank us, and we're appreciative of the job we did, and we represent our community well. And, of course, we raised necessary resources to help us out in our program so we can continue to have just something special for our guys to enjoy throughout their four years at our school. So with that, I want to jump into what's going on this summer and talk about all the events that are happening. Go over the schedule, as you can see here on the screen, and that's going to happen this fall, which is a little unique and different than what we're used to. And so I wanted to cover those things, give you guys the details, allow you guys some time to figure it out and adjust your summer plans accordingly, and uh, we can rock and roll. So with that, we're going to jump right into the schedule. All right, so this is the calendar that we have for the summer. It kind of starts off in May. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, the image at the top is kind of our legend of what's going on. And the uh, outlined blue weightlifting guy represents the continuation of our spring off-season training program that's going on right now. And uh, right now we have that going on, of course, on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, for all athletes who aren't playing a sport, we're starting to slowly get some of those guys back who are playing a spring sport after a really successful spring. And we also have the eighth graders who have been training with us. Some of them have been able to make it after school. You know, they come right over after they leave school from uh, Coward Middle School. Unfortunately, our Southern Middle School students don't have an opportunity to take advantage of that. But we've had many students taking advantage of the 5.30 to 7 o'clock lift times on Tuesday and Thursday nights. And we're, we're proud of them for doing that. All that to get ready for what's going to happen during the summer. Uh, before we get to the summer training cycle, though, you'll notice that when we get to uh, May 29th, 31st, and June 1st, that we have football mini camp. Now, this particular football mini camp will be hosted right after school and is just for the returning players. A main reason being is that we want to kind of ramp up, get ourselves together, collect the group after we've passed on our seniors and, and the great things that they're going to be doing next year. We want to kind of get our guys together with who's left and, and who's going to be coming into the season this year and get them their minds built around what's upcoming this fall. Also to get us ready for the first 77 venture, which is June 3rd at University of Maryland. And we've had a great success in the past in our 77 tournaments. And of course, we're going to go to the same three that we went to last year. And we'll dig down deeper into the other ones here in a moment. So that three days is important and it's vital. And so if guys don't make that or can't make that, um, it's probably going to limit their ability to play on Saturday because we're going to be going over some 77 stuff. But now that the state has kind of allowed us the opportunity to have practices during the summer, a certain number of practices during the summer leading up to the season, these can be actual practice days for us as well. Uh, nothing egregious or crazy, but a chance for us to kind of get together with our kids, uh, try to bring some community back together, you know, get us get us connected again before the season starts so we can start building that com camaraderie that we like to have and help continue to reinstill our culture that we want to have leading into a really great uh, fall that we have for 2023. And so those days will be mandatory. The times will be determined. We'll be giving that information out forthright to the kids. Uh, but we're expecting our guys who are returning to be there. Again, not something that we need the eighth graders, incoming ninth graders to be a part of just yet. And then you'll see on June uh, 5th, there we're starting our summer training program. Now that schedule gets a little chaotic at first because of the fact that we're closing out the school year. And then we've also got graduations. And then we jump into the traditional format of summer training, which is going to go from 5.30 to 8.30 sharp. And so you'll notice that the 5th and 6th, and then, of course, the 12th, those three training days starting our summer training program is going to be directly after school. And so at that point, we will not bring the 8th graders in anymore. They will literally be done on the last day of May uh, in our training cycle on May 25th. And that gives them a chance to kind of get their bearings straight and get ready to rock and roll, because when we start up, on June 19th, we are rock and roll and we're moving at a fast paced tempo that we've talked about that we do during the summer. And so June 19th and June 20th and June 22nd is literally that first official week where we change the hours up and we go from 530 to 830.
And then that week leads into our second 77 tournament at University of Maryland, which is a Friday Night Light event on Friday, June 23rd. Then you look at the next week. The next week we have, again, the three training days. And because of that opportunity for us to have practices, you're going to notice the orange check mark there, which represents a practice day. So we will finish practice, our workouts just a little bit early and then extend workouts a little longer so that we can literally get some practice in with our guys. And again, they'll have all their conditioning done and out of the way, but this will be more football hands-on. Soccer will be up there. Other groups that train with us during the summer will be doing their own deal. We'll be doing football-specific stuff to kind of build out you know, the things we need to do. It'll be catered directly and only to install and going through some team stuff. And then, of course, you can see on the 23rd or 28th, excuse me, of June, we've got a football mini camp at the Wednesday. These things are going to kind of replace a 77 league that we would have through FCA last year and replace, um, you know, the, the, the lineman time that we would have separately. And we're going to be together. And there's a chance that we could bring in some other schools to kind of meet with us where we can do some things with them. But nevertheless, those are dates that we have. Now, we understand that throughout this summer calendar, now that we're getting into the crust of it, that not every kid's going to be able to make everything. We don't expect them to make everything. I can, I have the freedom of being the coach. And so I kind of build out my summer uh, vacation schedule around this, which I think is important because I need to be there as much as possible. But even I will miss the first week of training because I will be gone and taking a much deserved and needed rest and break away from the school uh, and getting out of Dodge for a, a short bit so that way I can collect myself and get together with my family and enjoy some time away. And then, so you'll see the football mini camp there on uh, the 28th. And then that Friday, following our workout on the 29th, that Friday is the senior bonding trip to the ocean. A very special opportunity that we take all of our seniors. We've been making a tradition of this for many years. And so we'll give details to those seniors as well. But those seniors know, we'll kind of talk to them about it. They need to carve out that time. And we would love to have all seniors be a part of that. The one-day trip to the ocean and back, and it's something that, that I think is important for those guys to have as a moment of, of memory and, and a time of, of being together to celebrate what's coming into the next couple of weeks. And so we go on to July then. July starts to get a little bit busy because now we obviously have 4th of July, which will cut us from having workouts on that Tuesday, uh, but we do have workouts on the 3rd and the 6th. And then you can see the following week, we go 9th, 10th, or excuse me, 10th, 11th, uh, 12th and 13th with events being planned. Once again, we'll have a practice there after our workout on the 11th. And then we have a mini camp again on the 12th. And then again, Saturday, we have our 77 tournament at Towson. That'll be our final 77 tournament event. And then uh, we go into the final week of our training cycle, which we'll do our testing and uh, things like that. And that's the 17th and 18th. Again, the 18th, finishing with the practice. And then we go into our camp circuit and so the first one of course is our youth contact camp that we host here at coward high school through one heart athletics we're excited about that because it sounds like we're gonna have other sports teams from the school participating in that and so not only will football and cheer be there there's a chance baseball track a uh, field hockey soccer might be there as well we're just talking about you know cavaliers representing as well as as counselors coaches there and many 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 young people from our community being able to be encouraged through the sports they love and through the unbelievable great people that represent our programs here at the high school. So we're excited about that. And so we ask, again, all of our players to be aware or be a, a, a around so they can help as counselors. And, of course, there's a 103 camp, which is what we require, well, not require, we ask our incoming ninth graders to be a part of. It's a chance for our incoming ninth graders to be officially a part of something together, exclusively on their own, getting coached up by our coaches, who do a great job over three days, and, and they're going to get a chance to get poured into and kind of understand the, the foundational pieces of our program as they grow into the season. It gives them a little bit of head start. The following week is the Shepherd Team Camp. We go to University West, uh, Shepherd University, and there we'll have six practices over three days, which includes all-they-can-eat meals, seven of those, uh, air-conditioned dorm we stay at, and generally speaking, there's other teams that are there as well that we're able to kind of work with. And uh, that's a great experience. Kids walk away loving that experience. And so that that's going on at the end of July. Again, that's open to all Cavaliers. The cost normally for that is around 275. Again, we'll have that information come to you forthright. Uh, but that information will come as an addition to 
you know, how you register and where you make payments through One Heart Athletics. You notice on the 27th, 28th, 29th, we have nothing going on. And in actuality, you're going to see that we have nothing going on until August 8th. And so what I need our folks to do, and, and I know sometimes for our incoming ninth graders, there's things that they don't know because they've just started playing high school sports and they weren't aware of the schedule and stuff. Although I do know that youth programs traditionally start their schedules um, a little bit earlier than we do, in fact. But nevertheless, this is the schedule and we need our athletes to understand this and they need to get locked in so that way they don't miss any time in practices. And, and you know, the preseason can seem a little bit intense for our kids. It can seem something that, that, you know, requires a little bit more commitment they've had in the past, but the rewards are obviously well worth it. And so you can see here in this diagram on August 8th, that's when we're going to issue equipment. On August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, uh, those days are actually the first day of practices, and they'll be traditionally be in the afternoon and evenings, uh, with the exception of the weekends will be in the mornings, because we have so many transient coaches that work, and so they're coming in from their other jobs, and we don't want to kind of, we don't want to have practice without them. So we have to set that up. And it also, I think, helps with y'all's transportation. Uh, on the 14th, that'll be our final day of acclimatization, which means that at that point, those kids who have practiced at that point will have uh, satisfied the acclimatization laws, which gets them used to being out in the heat. It's kind of strange because we spend all the time training during the summer, uh, but they have to go under the, the, the assumption that some kids weren't there during the summer. And so we don't want to put them in a situation where they could get themselves injured through heat exhaustion. And so you can see on the 15th now that we're talking about with the gold check mark, now we're in two a days. And so we go two a day, one a day, two a day, one a day. And, and really our two a day schedule is not a traditional two a day as most of us remember when we were in high school. Uh, we don't have them here all day. We just start the practice schedule a little earlier and we end a little later. So the kids will get kind of two practices in, but one of them is a little different where it's a kind of a walkthrough or special teams type thing. We come in, we eat, we go over some film study, we're in the classrooms, cooling, relaxing, and then we're back out with a more structured uh, and intense practice. And then you can see on the 18th is our first scrimmage, and then the 25th is our second scrimmage. And then, of course, you can see the start of school is the 28th. And then that leads into our football schedule here, which is a very unique schedule. And we're working on how that's going to look and what are the details on how we're going to operate and manage this. The, the conference has decided to help with the issues that we've had with having, you know, enough officials officiate games and the quality of officiating to, to move the games into different nights for the varsity. So that way we are not all having a game on the same night, which could help eliminate some of the issues where we have conflicts for officials and not having enough officials. We played many games last year without enough officials. And so this, I think, is going to give us a chance to kind of like, you know, alleviate that. Um, there are certainly some growing pains that go along with it. Uh, but, you know, our job as coaches and, and, you know, people in our program is to make sure that we come up with a way to, to work around them. So some of the things that we're noticing that are going to be tough is that they've moved all of our JV games to Mondays. And I think there's two there Tuesdays. Uh, and, and, and that's the reason because they're going to allow our JV kids to now be a part of the varsity program. So, for example, if you look at the first game, we play St. Charles away on 9-1, which is September 1st. The gold team plays on 9-2, which I think is a Saturday. And that might be one of their only Saturday games. Well, any kid who's in our program, and you guys have heard or understand about our program, we are truly a true program and that our Younger guys who play on the gold team are literally the next man up for the blue team. And we use that gold team as a developmental program for our blue team. They play games. Those games matter. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the, if, if we have a rash of injuries with that blue squad, the gold guys come up. We have the same coaches coaching the blue squad and the gold squad. So, you know, with all that in place, you know, we know that we're just one big program, which adds to some of the nuances and creativity we have to have for this per, this this type of new schedule. Uh, because we don't have the ability to say, okay, JV's practicing over here and varsity. Our guys work together. So we're going to have to be very creative when it comes to our JV playing or our gold team playing and our varsity playing or our blue team playing. So that way we have all things covered and uh, we certainly don't impact one program or one team or the other. So, you know, St. Charles, when we go to St. Charles and we play the blue team, we can have several of the gold guys up 
and, and they could be there to bolster our roster and play in a chance that we may need them. Or if we get up and, and we're able to be out in front, uh, you know, by a certain number of points, they can get some experience at the varsity level. That would prevent them from playing in the JV game. But these type of nuances have never been experienced before until we get to the playoffs. And so this is going to be a really cool opportunity. And so then, you know, that's going to be true for any one of these games on the schedule because the JV is going to play the same opponent on Monday, Tuesday, or the day after the varsity plays. And so this schedule is pretty important. It will, it will change up the structure and, and, and the organization of how we practice and when we get things done. So I ask you guys to please be flexible on that and know that we will send information to you guys as we figure this whole thing out. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to give this information to you guys. I want to thank you again for all the support. Again, the mulch sale is phenomenal. We've had a great year, a great spring. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the, the school year. And so then that means the fourth quarter. That fourth quarter is the one that matters for eligibility for the coming up season. I hate to say this because I don't feel like the standard that the school system has for our kids to be eligible is a standard that I think promotes excellence or uncommon greatness, but I do understand why they do it. And, and it's in the sense that we want kids to eventually figure out what they need to do academically. And who's to say that it's not their junior or sophomore or senior year that they finally figure that out. And so giving them a chance to do that is fine. However, I get many kids that when they get to the end of their junior year, they're like, also oh, now they want to go play college football or they want to go to college, whatever. And that sitting at bar at having a 70% grade point average for the fourth quarter and no more than one failure doesn't get them college ready. Certainly doesn't get them into college. Uh, and we are able to show that, hey, if you do well in school, as we've said from the get go, uh, the seniors that we just had graduated have been able to enjoy the benefits of that in each of their four respective schools where they've earned a great deal of merit-based and academic-based finances and money. So, you know, I'm so proud of those guys because they're literally going to school at a very uh, low cost um, and some of them hardly any cost in comparison to what the cost of school is this day because of what they did in the classroom, what they did on the field, and what they did in the community. And of course, those are the three pillars of our program that we measure our guys by. And so we're asking our guys to finish this year strong in the community finish your strong on the field, finish your strong in the weight room, finish your strong in the classroom, because those things are the things that we have to continue to do a great job of for us to continue to grow into uncommon greatness. And so with that, I got nothing else for you. I ask and encourage you guys to reach out, text me, call me, whatever you need to do to get any information that you may need to make sure that we're properly prepared for this summer. And with that, I love you guys. I'm proud to be a Cavalier. I'm out.